My lovely wife and best friend, Danielle's family, come from a tiny enclave nation called San Marino. Surrounded by Italy, in the mountains, I hear the views are amazing, and I would like to see those views someday. In the meantime, I'll recreate it in ArcGIS Online. And the best vantage in the country looks to be right about here. So I am going to find this spot in the ArcGIS Online map viewer. Again, longing for the sweet, sweet day when I can view this place with my own eyes. I'll open up the analysis tools here on the right, and I'm going to search for view. And there it is, the view shed tool. And the first question it asks me is, from where would you like to view? Robots always speak in that confident voice. I'm going to choose draw a point. And I'll drop it right here in this majestic courtyard. And let's take a look at our parameters. Observer height, six feet. Yeah, let's just go ahead and say I'm six feet. Hmm. My units, I'll switch to kilometers and I'm gonna max it out at 50 kilometers. And then I'll just name it, view from a top. And before I get ahead of myself, let's see how many, it's free. No credits. Looks like the price is right. Let's run this. And while this runs, you can do a little bit of light reading about your subject area. Fun fact, when Danielle married me, a short time later, we got a packet in the mail and it was all in Italian. And it turns out they were notifying her that she was no longer able to vote in San Marino. <laughs> okay, we're back. The results are in. And that took about one minute to process. So here are the places I could plausibly see from my perch atop San Marino. So are we done? No, we're not done. We still need to make it look cool. I want this view shed to have an illuminating effect, so first I need to make the base map dark. Navigating into the base map, I'll choose World Imagery and I'll activate the Effects panel. I'll choose Brightness and Contrast. Brightness, I'll push down a ways and Contrast, I'll increase. And so it looks more nighttimey, I'm going to activate the Saturate option and drag that down to desaturating. And I'll close these effects and then check out my layers. I'll rename my View Origin to Origin and I'll drag it up as the topmost layer. Now let's play with our view shed layer a little bit. I'll select it and make sure that there's no transparency. I want it to be fully opaque. And then I'll edit its style. I want to get rid of its outline. Just have a fill. And next I'll go into the effects and just give it a very slight blur. Now that I've got my nighttime imagery all set, let's bring in some daytime imagery. I'll add a layer from Living Alice. I'll search for imagery and I'll choose world imagery. It's the same as the base map, but this one is a layer. I'll drag it to the bottom of my layer list and now I'm going to brighten it up doing pretty much the exact opposite effects as I did to the base map. Contrast down to 60 and brightness up to 160. And then I'll push the saturation way up for that beautiful sun-drenched Italian coast. And the next step is, I'll admit it, straight up magic. I'm going to group this view shed layer, expand the group, and I'm going to put world imagery inside this new group, underneath, on the bottom. And then I'll select the view shed layer and apply a blend mode from the composite group. And this is called Destination Atop. It's like a cookie cutter. Boom. It just makes so much sense when it looks this way. The viewable area, rather than covering up the map, now illuminates it. And as you zoom in and pan around, the underlying imagery base map pulls in scale appropriate tiles. And speaking of scales, it might be kind of nice to have a sense of distance radiating from the original viewpoint. So it's back to the analysis tools we go. I'll search for the buffer tool and choose create buffers. And I'll tell the buffers to be drawn around that original view origin sketch point that I added earlier. I'll set the distance units to kilometers and I'll set incremental distances of 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. So I should get five rings each 10 kilometers apart. I'll give it a name and let's check the credits. It is one one thousandth of a credit, which is equivalent to one nineteenth of a Stanley nickel. I accept. And once again, this process took about one minute. And I'll style them up so that they have no fill and just a simple white outline. The outline itself will have no transparency and it'll be two points thick. And then I'll nestle it into the background by giving it a soft light blend mode. Now I think this map needs a little bit of context, so I'm going to add a label layer. So I'll go back to this base map button and dig into the base map layers and I'm going to add from Living Atlas Human Geography Dark Labels. These are light labels designed for a dark base map. And I'll make it semi-transparent so that it's not so vibrant. And I'll drag it up into the reference layers so that it floats atop all of my data layers. Now I'm thinking about adding some labels to these concentric rings. And I'll position them along this diagonal beam of light here. Now I have to admit, I haven't actually done this before. I haven't added text via these sketch tools. So let's see how it goes. The type of sketch item is going to be text and I'll type in 10 km 
And I'll make it this kind of light golden color and I'll reduce its text size to 15. And I'll just drop it right here at this first 10 kilometer concentric buffer distance. Okay, it worked. And I'll just drop another one and I'll change its content to 20K instead of 10K. And I, I don't know why it got bigger on the map. Let me just jiggle the font size here, 14, 15, now it's back. Okay, I don't know why that is, but I'll just do the same thing for 30, 40, and 50. And there we go, a nice little view shed map in ArcGIS Online showing me what I could see from the top of San Marino. I hope you give this a try for some of your favorite scenic overlooks. Thanks for watching.